Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical tips that we all can do on a daily basis, which can lead us to finding our inner peace. I know that inner peace is possible. I've been without it. I've found ways to get it. And on this podcast, we talk about ways that we can find it and keep it on a daily basis. Well, I'm joined today by our guest, uh, Sean Flynn, and he's with a organization which is uh, titled Hashtag I Care. And this is an organization that is really doing some groundbreaking work and helping people, uh, you know, to really come out and and speak about, you know, what's going on in in our lives. And one of the things that we talk about here on this podcast is, you know, tips to find our inner peace. And and one of those is to be comfortable, uh, you know, with who we are. But sometimes that societal uh, norms and societal ways of viewing, you know, who we are prohibits us from doing that. So, very uh, pleased to have uh, Sean with us and to talk about the issues. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, no problem at all, Chris. And thank you so much for having me. You know, any any opportunity I can get, you know, to spread the message of everything that we're trying to do, I'm definitely going to uh, take advantage of because it is a cause that's near and dear to my heart. And um, I know the same as well with you. And you know, at the end of the day, that's that's what the eye care movement is all about. It's just spreading the the awareness and um, and the message as far and as wide as we can. It, exactly, and you know, when I did see what you guys are doing, you know, I, I've been a clinician for over twenty years, and you know, looking at the mental health issues, you know, what it seems that you're all about is so vital to healing. Uh, you know, and, and not just on the clinical side, but just actual, you know, healing of, of people in their relationships and their connectedness uh, with society. Can you uh, describe for the audience what it is that I Care does and, and what you're all about? Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's a very, you know, it's been a very humbling um, experience because I Care has really only been around for the past couple months. You know, it's, it's in a very uh, young age and Mm -hmm. yet with that, you know, to see the legs that it's grown in such a short time, it's been very humbling. And, you know, it it all, it all started. um, I'll try to give you the quick version. So I can keep (laughs) you here for hours. So I'll give you the quick version. You know, it all, I, I say that it started in an instant, but of course, you know, for me, it was a lifetime in the making because it's, it's a, combination of a chain of events, you know, from my young age is all the way up through till now. But what actually, you know, the actual spark that created um, the birth of the movement um, was the unfortunate and untimely suicide of Chester Bennington, uh, the Mm. Lincoln Park lead singer, who I'm 33, you know, and Lincoln Park, they were huge when I was, you know, coming up in high school. Right. And they got me through so much, even in, even in my adult years, you know, they've just, just been an outlet for somebody like myself who I battle a lot of things internally, you know, music is such a, a powerful outlet for so many of us. And, you know, when I found out what had happened, it was just one of those sparks that just went off. I was like, you know, enough is enough and this isn't okay. And, you know, I need to do something. And what, what led to I care and the actual phrase I care um, is Lincoln Park had just put out, their latest album, um, you know, literally weeks before Chester had committed suicide. And mm. the title of the album was One More Light. And One More Light was the title song. And it was a song that I was very drawn to. Um, and it was really, you know, just Chester kind of 
talking, you know, if you look deep at the song, it's talking about suicide. And, um, you know, the, the lyrics are, you know, who cares if one more light goes out in the sky of a million stars? Well, I do. And he's just kind of continuously saying, you know, who cares if one more light goes out? I do. And as I'm mm-hmm. listening to that song, after I, you know, heard what had happened, in my mind, it's just like, who cares if one more light goes out? And I just said, I care. And then it was just like, boom, <laughs> right then, right there. It was <laughs> exactly. just that kind of that powerful spark where I just said, you know what? I do care and it's time to do something. And, you know, I just hit the ground running on social media. Um, it's one of those, if I do have a superpower, it's, it's that, it's social <laughs> media. It's something I've done a lot over the past couple of years. I've grown personal brands. I've, I've done work for businesses and I know how to make some noise very quickly on social media. And one of my favorite quotes that I have always leaned on um, is from Spider-Man, corny, but it's okay. And that's, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. And mm-hmm. I just felt that weighing responsibility that, you know, I do have the power to spread awareness. I do have the power to do, you know, some good for this message, some good for this cause. And it's my responsibility to do so. And here we are, you know, it's, it's really, like I said, it's really been humbling because it started as me just putting it out to the world on social media, to my networks, you know, here's the mission, here's the message, you know, the stigmas attached to mental health, you know, they need to stop. We need to, create a community. We need to give people a platform to open up um, because, you know, a, a lot of it is, you know, battling things alone or feeling that you're alone and feeling that you can't open up, you know, because of the backlash that you fear getting. And, um, you know, that's really in a nutshell what we're all about. It's just spreading the awareness, creating a community, giving people, you know, the safe platform to open up and, and, and tell their story, to tell their message, you know, because for me, and I'm sure you can, agree with this you know when you open up and and you share you know what's going on upstairs and, and maybe some things that you've been through that have you've been battling alone you know not only is it therapeutic for you to kind of finally vocalize things but also you know there's so many people out there you know you think you're battling something alone but when you share your story and people see it and then they relate to it and then they're like hey you know what thank you so much for doing that thank you so much for saying that because I, I feel the same things. I've been battling that as well. And I thought I was alone. And some of those thoughts and, and, and relationships that can form of that, you know, it just creates that chain, uh, the chain reaction. Um, it's just so beneficial in so many ways when, when we start collectively opening up about the things that we've been taught or, or, or societally forced mm-hmm. to keep inside. Oh, uh, exactly. And, and that's, you know, really what I loved about what, it seemed that your site was all about and the movement that you're trying to do, because, you know, so often I would be working with people who would, you know, share a a lot of what's going on within themselves in that confines of the counselor's office, because they knew it was safe and it wasn't going to go anywhere because when they got outside, they had to keep their mouth shut, you know, and, That was the sad part because I I agree with you, you know, there's a a greater healing that happens when you can be yourself, you know, it's, you know, like you could go to work and say to somebody, you know, well, I don't feel too well today. And everybody, you know, gives you sympathy. If you go to work and say, you know, I'm really having a bad depression day today. It's not the same thing. You know, right. But it really is. But people are going to look at that different. You know, you can't do that. So you have to put on the happy face and you can't be who you are. Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, it's 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 kind of funny with me because, you know, when I first started on social media a couple of years back, you know, I've done a ton of live streaming. And when Periscope first came out, I was all over that. And I was, <laughs> you know, a big motivational um, that was really my brand was, you know, motivational. I, I did a lot of sales um, talks and topics and things of that nature, you know, and I was Mr. Motivation and Mr. Inspiration. And I've always kind of been that character um, in really any outlet that you put me in, whether it's school, through college, you know, professionally, I'm always kind of that person that people can look to, you know, to for the pep talk and to kind of, you know, kick things up a notch. But at the same time, you know, I battle things uh, um, alone internally, just like, just like the rest of us, mm-hmm. you know, and I, and I dealt with that a lot. And that was a lot of, of what caused me to kind of, of, when I say it was yes, in that moment with everything that had happened with Chester and the kind of light, the dots connecting and whatnot, but it was really a lifetime in the making as well. Like I said, because 
you know, I battle just like everybody else. And it's kind of one of those, I, I hit a point personally where I needed help and it was like, well, who does, who does the, the Mr. Motivator turn to when he needs help? You know, because I certainly can't exactly. open up and talk about this because if I open up and talk about this, then what are people going to think of me? They're supposed to look to me. And it's, you know, and I, it's just, it's knowing that if this, if, if this can happen to me, you know, then I can only imagine, you know, the pains that, that are, are going on out there. And it's just something we've, it's something we've, we've collectively need to, uh, to get better at as a society and as people and, as a country and as a culture and, and everything. Oh, and, and I completely agree that it's, we can't continue to have people not share who they are. And we've come a long way, you know, with people who are different, you know, I put that in quotes, where we're becoming more open as a society to accept. But yet when it comes to mental illness, we're, we're not there yet. And right. I, I wonder if you, you know, when, when you look at helping society to change, what would be some of the things that you would be thinking of and, and maybe that the I, I Care movement can do to help in making that change? I mean, how, how do we shift a society into accepting a, a whole group of people that they don't want to? For me, it's about leading by example. Um, and that's really, you know, because I... I, it was, it took a lot for me. It took a lot for me to finally cross that line myself of, of letting, cause I'm, you know, that's what I'm trying to do is just be as open and as real as I can, you know, on a platform where I was viewed so differently. You know, I, I really pulled a complete 180 with what people kind of thought of me or perceived me. And I knew that. And that was part mm-hmm. of what had kept me keeping things in so long because you build up this image of yourself and you're so terrified to, break that or let anybody see any ounce of weakness in you. Um, you know, and for me, that's, that's what it's about. It's about leading by example. And you know, the, where I say with great power comes great responsibility. You know, like I said, I have that ability to, to reach people online. And that's what I, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to create a chain, I'm chain reaction. Let me lead by example. Let me step out, open my, oh, be an open book, put everything out there and let enough people see that where they start saying, Hey, you know what? I'm going to do that too. I'm going to open up because you get enough people together, you know, opening up, putting the message out there. It truly is a trickle down effect. And that to me is, is a big part of how to kind of make a shift in society right. is as, as individuals, it's like as one person, yeah, you can make a difference, but you can still, you, you pile enough people together and start singing the same tune, you know, in harmony together loudly. That's when people start taking notice. And that's where, hence you know a movement um, um can become right. and right and there's nothing more to me there's there's no movement i'd rather be pushing than a, than a movement of of acceptance and kindness and in community i mean at the end of the day that's what it's all about and i totally agree with that because you know my whole focus is on helping people to find their inner peace and when you can't because of that stigma share who you are or things that are going on inside of you even with some people who would be close to you, that's going to take away that notion of your own peace. And that's not right. going to help any type of, of healing or recovery um, just add to the woundedness. Absolutely. Absolutely. What have you been seeing uh, recently with the I care movement as far as uh, any changes happening you know, within people or areas, and I know it's only been a couple months, but have you noticed change? It's been a couple months. Yeah, there's there's been um, people have been opening up, which is a start. Um, people are starting to to notice, and and again, you know, patience is a virtue. But I I <laughs> do still have that 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 mindset of you know I, I come from a sales background, and I do have that drive of. You know, we got we've got a we've got a 10x this thing, and we've got a we've got to put a ton of motion behind it. Um, but understanding, still, it's only been a few months. Uh, however, you know, it's people are starting to notice, and it's, mm-hmm. it's no, I don't, I don't think it's coincidental. Um, literally, you know, this past week, you know, you had reached out to me online, but I've had, you know, two or three other individuals like yourself, and you know, different communities reach out as well. 
with the podcast, with the, all these different things. Kind of, it seems like things are starting to take shape now, where people are noticing some magic happening behind what's going on with eye care, and um, that that's again, it's humbling. Uh, it's incredibly humbling to see. And you know what? I have just today, actually, but prior to um, speaking with you now, a couple hours back, um, I started what will may potentially become, I don't know if it's going to be a podcast or what the terminology is going to be, because I'm very much, you know, flying by this, by the scenes here with everything. Um, but I started, whether it's a podcast or a show on Facebook, um, because I just got into Facebook creator, which apparently it seems like Facebook just opened up, um, which may be something you want to look at too, because it's pretty cool. It's the yeah. old Facebook mentions, which they used to, you know, celebrities and like verified public, figures could use to do their live streams. It seems like they've opened that up across the board. You have to apply and do a quick little application to get through. But they put out a new platform. And that was that to me that was another kind of sign of well, oh, maybe I should take this to Facebook and do some more live broadcasts. So, you know, that's gonna be kind of the next step for me with the movement is, you know, starting to get some guest hosts on and um, bring in people from other communities and, and similar causes to uh, to open up a bit more and you know, continue the spark that's been created, but really it's just the traction, you know, it's the traction that I have seen and, um, and the awareness. And it's like, when it starts to grow, it grows quickly, you know, and, and knowing social media, like I do, where it's what I do professionally, um, I can sense when something has that magic to it and it's very much does. And to me, that is just the sign that what we're doing is very much needed. Um, and it's humbling. You know, it's just to see the people that reach out to me privately, just saying, you know, I appreciate what you're doing. Um, you know, the movement means so much to me. I can't wait to help out. What can I do? I've got people from, you know, different countries, different states, locally here. I live in Maine. Um, you know, and I've got people locally here that are just waiting um, to help out, you know. And, and a lot of what I've been talking about recently, because we're, uh, we're not a nonprofit yet. That's next on the agenda for me because I have mm -hmm. a whole slew of ideas of things that I want to do to really kick things up a notch and, and really begin to expand. Um, you know, and I want to start by doing some local events here in Maine. I'm planning a, um, a race, a, a walk run event in the spring to kind of Excellent. get the message out there. And I want to, I want to, that's kind of what's next for us. And that's where things are starting to go is starting to, I'm going to, again, try to lead by example start putting on some local events here and I know that the people that I have behind me across the country in different um in different countries as well to kind of see that and let other people kind of step up in their communities and kind of take the torch and run with it there as well um that's 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 what's been on the agenda and that's kind of what's been happening in the right now all of that is awesome I do see this blossoming because I really think that there is a grassroots swelling of people who want to get this word out. They want to stand up and promote awareness of mental health, but for various reasons really don't know either how to or right. have that courage to do it. When they see That's somebody what... with that courage, they'll come in. Yes. And, and that's what is so powerful with this. And that's really, you know, that everybody literally like it's, it's, I, I hear the same basic message from anybody that reaches out, um, which is that, I mean, it's like almost word for word, people reach out and they say, you know, this is a movement that is so near and dear to my heart. You know, what can I do to help? This is so near and dear to my heart. I've been waiting for something like this to happen. What can I do to help? I mean, it's like an echo. It's like a, just the same voice over and over again. And that's just, it, it just shows, you know, like exactly what you mm -hmm. just said. This is something that, because we all, you know, and, and I, and I'm a firm believer. I don't, I don't, I don't care about what the images that people put out and how strong they try to put out. Every, we all battle on varying levels, of course, but we all battle ourselves. We all battle things internally. We all have mental health issues that we deal with. And, Almost definitely. And, and this just, oh yeah, you know, and this is just goes to show of course people care about it because it's what they deal with every single day. And, and when they start to see, like you said, they start to see people talk about it and they start to see somebody open up and then it's like, yeah, this matters. Yes. Yes. This is, this is something I've been waiting for. What can we do? But like you said, you know, just because you want 
to do something or you feel that passion or you feel that fire, you don't always have, you don't always know how to, what, where to point the arrow, you know, right. and if we can kind of guide people in that direction of, okay, here's what we can do and kind of show them again, lead by example. Um, you know, the rest is history. I just, I just know in my heart of hearts that there are so many in, in, a, in a time right now with this world where things are so chaotic and all over the map. I just, I, I know there are so many amazing, beautiful souls out there that want to do good, that want to help. And it's just a matter of stringing things together and, and, and leading the way and being that voice and being that light and letting people follow. And, 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 and in my, in my mind, in my heart, it's like, I, I, I honestly, I want, I want to see the I care movement grow to something where I don't even have to do anything. You know, I can just step back. And, and let the people, let, let everybody that, that has this passion in their heart to do good just kind of run with it because I think it has that potential to get that, those types of legs. It definitely has a potential, and I'm really appreciative that you're leading this, at least at this stage of it, because somebody does have to step up and do it, and then people will come in. And as you say, you know, once you get more people following them, more are even going to follow them more and more because this is an issue that touches everyone. I don't know of, of anybody who has not on some level been touched by mental illness. So right. when you look at this issue, this is something that affects everyone. This isn't a small segment of the population. There is that support out there. So I'm very appreciative that you're doing this because it is giving that outlet that I know over the course of my years in doing counseling, people haven't found. So right. social media is helping, of course. It, it you know, gets that word out. How best right now could people help this movement, could help you with this movement? So for all those who would be listening to this right now, you know, what is it that you need from people now to propel this to what it can be and even beyond? You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's all about awareness. You know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, when you have something like this that, you know, has magic behind it, it's, it's simp it's, you, you've got to get in front of as many people as you can. You know, you can, you can have the most powerful message in the world. And again, this stuff, this is where my sales mindset will, <laughs> oh, it starts to creep in. You can have the most power. You can have the best product in the world, and you can have the most powerful message in the world. But if you're only getting in front of two, three, four people, uh, you know, doesn't mean it's not good work being done. But when you want to, when you want to hit the masses, you've got to make some noise. You know, so exactly. right now, in in the early stages, it really is all about awareness. You know, and and growing the community. Um, we have. We have a couple different outlets. You know, if you've got the Instagram page that's growing pretty quickly. That's where this is really taking off the most is on Instagram as far as numbers go. But and that's where I found, first goes, found you guys was actually the Instagram on, page. Yeah. And it's, you know, and, and with good, I mean, that's, a, a, you know, Instagram has a lot of different hot niches and hot topics and, and mental health and depression is definitely one of them that's on there, you know, and I try to, I try to target my message, you know, through hashtags and everything like that to hit and reach the people that need help. Um, so Instagram is kind of, it's, it's almost funny to see how in, in different outlets, it kind of takes a different shape on, on Instagram. It's, it's a lot more of right now, just kind of me putting the message out, putting the posts out. I get people messaging me all the time. Sometimes they just need to vent. Sometimes they need a bit of advice. And what I always have to tell everybody, you know, and, and this, Again, we could go for hours, so I won't try to side tangent too much with this. Oh, not but at all. One of, uh, uh, another big component to the eye care movement is trying to effectively, you know, show the people that do care and do want to help how to help. Because that's, that's you get into pretty dicey waters, you know, and it, 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 it can get scary and it can get tough. You know, I've had conversations with people, you know, and it's over – you know, DMs on Instagram. So you don't know if, to what extent the person is really struggling, to what extent they're suicidal. There's so many variables at play there, especially when you're behind computer screens, you exactly. know, but it, if you have a heart and you want to help somebody and you start putting it out there to the world that, Hey, 
I'm here. You're not alone. I'll help you. I'll listen to you, whatever. People then reach out to you and have serious issues going on. And maybe they are suicidal and maybe they have, you know, extreme circumstances happening. And then you're kind of in the corner of what do I do? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to help. And then you kind of start feeling guilt of what if I say the wrong thing? I don't want to upset them because they're in a fragile mindset. So to me, another big part of eye care, which, you know, again, just barely even scraping the surface of is not only providing the resources to those people in need of, of the assistance because of where they may be at mentally, you know, in extreme situations, and even, and even in not extreme situations, but also for those that want to help and want to know how they can effectively help. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, that's that's going to be a huge, huge portion of what I really want to try to go with that side of it as well. But what I was saying before my little side tangent there was that, you know, I always lead with this and maybe you have, you, you've professionally, I'm not a professional. And I always let people know, that. look, I'm, I'm not a professional. I'm just a guy who cares and who will listen. And, you know, you're not alone. I'm here. I don't always have all the answers. That's what I always preface everything with. I don't always have all the answers. I don't always have the solution. But what I do have, you know, is a set of ears, you know, and a shoulder for you and let loose. You know, I'm, right. I'm here for you in that regard. And that's, that's something t- to go back a little bit with. Well, what do we need right now as far as the I care movement goes? In addition to, you know, the awareness factor. Um, you know, it's putting together, you know, tools or resources for those that do want to help that maybe don't know how to, or maybe don't know how to best help. Um, because this spirals into so many different topics and so many different categories. It really, truly does. Oh, definitely. Well, and, and that's wonderful to hear because if you can get this movement to not just get that stigma erased, but now what do we do to help? And how do we help right. the helpers? This really is encompassing, from my viewpoint, all of the issues. Get rid of the stigma, help those who need it, and help the helper. Um, yes. To, to me, that's, that's the comprehensive work. That, that's what needs to be done. And I, I definitely would encourage my audience, and, and I'll keep putting out words to promote as well, but I know in my audience there are other professionals. So who out there has already developed these things or would develop these things who would be willing to share with you and the movement? Right. You know, because right. helping the helper, and, and what I mean with that is, you know, the non-professionals, to understand right. and to cope and to support is vital. And I, I know that people have worked on this stuff. They need to hopefully step up and say, Here's a couple programs I'll give you. Here's a couple things you can, you know, share. So definitely uh, I'm encouraging people right now, but I'll also continue, you know, throughout social media and and even when I just interact with people to let them know that this exists and here are some needs from the uh, professional community, not just, uh, you know, people who want to step up and, you know, do whatever they can do to help you out. Exactly. It, it's it's powerful and it's and it and it's so needed, you know, um because the, the issues the issues that you that you kind of you know, when you put your hand up as somebody that will help and somebody that cares and somebody that will listen and then you get approached. I, I mean firsthand I can say this, it can be incredibly overwhelming because oh, yeah. you, you, you start to realize, you know, you holy cow, you know, this this you know, I've got I've got life or death in my hands here as far <laughs> as somebody's mindset and that is a lot to take on. And then it almost becomes like, I've got to take a deep breath, you know, and right. having, uh, right. having, having effective, effective tools um, is, is huge. And, and, and at the end of the day, sometimes it's just, it's just, um, you know, coaching the helpers, you know, how to effectively lead um, people to the professional help um, and exactly. the most effective professional help um, and understanding what that means. You know, there, there's a lot of that side to it too. Uh, oh yeah, been working close with with me, you know. And I haven't, th- you know, I'm a guy that battles depression, and I'm a guy that battles, you know, varying types of anxiety. But as far as on a personal level, you know, I haven't been, you know, through institutions and things of that nature, you know. But I've been connected with people that have, and and sometimes they have some stories that are not so uh, positive of their experiences mm-hmm. and understanding 
as well, you know, not just guiding people to professional help, but make sure that you're guiding them to the right type of professional help and, and understanding what the aftermath of all that is, because it's, it's just, it, it goes so deep. And I'm sure with what you do, you are aware of that and everything. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's a oh, lot. Yeah, it so there is a lot of work to be done. In a nutshell, oh, there's a lot because there's a lot of work to be done. As you were just saying that, my mind went over to that other side. It's like, you know, yeah, we need to work on stigma and all, but now there's a side where we need to work on regulations and policy and laws and yeah. insurance yeah. and, you know, all of this other stuff because there are horror stories out there and, and those horror stories need to stop. You know, the experiences yeah. of people being mistreated needs to stop, but that's a whole regulatory side and, you know, right. local law, federal law and, but it it does happen, but there is a lot of good out there and a lot of good resources. And once we can start to get people referred, as you say, to the proper practitioners and the proper right. level of care, most of, of right now, the mental uh, health issues can be taken care of where people can live, you know, lives free of these symptoms, but they have to get the right treatment and be able to afford it and find the people who do care and the people who know what they're doing. Exactly, so exactly. definitely something that uh, I can see this a, as a iteration down the road of the legislative branch of I care. <laughs> um, but seriously though. And that, and that's the beauty <laughs> of it. You know, it's the, I mean, this will be a lifelong labor of love, you know, it won't yes. stop. You know, there's so many, I mean, literally probably thousands of arms that can grow off of this and you know one step at a time you know i gotta oh, exactly. myself with that one step one step at a time but yeah there i mean this will branch off so many so many different ways it's just it's but one step at a time and we'll we'll we will get there and we will continue to uh to do it we to, to do what we do to just shed a little bit of light you know oh most definitely and as you know what you're saying it's working people are noticing and that's step number one get to notice it, Absolutely. you know, and, and getting that word out. So the website address that people can find, I care. So the website address, which will, you know, is probably the best place to start because it will link you everywhere. It'll link you to our Facebook group. It'll link you to the Instagram and everything. Um, it's hashtag, the, the word hashtag spelled out. So H A S H T A G. And then I care, I C A R E.com hashtag I um, It's pretty, it's pretty prominently on every page you go on. There's going to be a, a big old, you know, join our, join the I care movement on Facebook link. Mm -hmm. um, and that's earlier when I was kind of like, there's different right now, each platform I care kind of has a different, a different theme or a different um, kind of a different feel to it. But um, on the, com in the community on Facebook, it's a closed Facebook group. So you have to request to join. Uh, but that is kind of where, a lot of the kind of person to person, you know, opening up, sharing happens. That's more of the kind of the community side of it. So really, you know, the more people we can grow in there, that's kind of where a lot of, I think the planning will occur is in that Facebook group. Um, the website itself, you know, there's a blog on there, which again, is just getting kicked off. I've written a couple of posts in there. Uh, I've got a, a great gal, Andressa, who has written a couple of blog posts as well. And that's something I'm willing to open up. You know, I want that to be a blog where people are feel free to share whatever they want to share, share their story, share tidbits right. of advice and help and things that have worked for them. So anybody ever wants to contribute, definitely, definitely reach out, you know, and there's resources. I did everything I could to try to blast every hotline, text helpline, everything <laughs> for any possible, you know, crisis number on there. So there's resources on there. There's the blog, there's the links to the social media and, and it'll grow from there. You know, as we start to plan events, you'll see events and things on there and whatnot. But uh, yeah, awesome. hashtag I care .com is a great place to start. Awesome. <clears throat> and I will put the website on our, uh, you know, right up for this podcast as well. So people just need to click there and that'll take you right over to your site and all the stuff that you're doing. So I, I definitely encourage, you know, all of the listeners to, find what it is that you can do to help and the stigma to help the helpers to just be supportive of people who are suffering and to start. And if not for nothing else, just be kind, just well, be kind, you, you know, that, that alone, that alone can have, and that's something we talk about a lot, you know, 
if not for nothing else, just be kind. Kindness is magic. <laughs> kind of the underlying, the underlying theme. Kindness is magic. You know, that, that, so I'm, all, I'm a big believer in ripples. In every action in life, there's ripples. And let's create positive ripples and not negative ripples. And just smile, be nice, be kind, because you never know what somebody is carrying with them. And that's a great place to end that with. And I appreciate your time and all that you're doing and the enthusiasm that you have for this movement. So uh, thank you again for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode. And I hope that the message in this episode has inspired you and given you some of the tools that you need to find peace in your life. If you have found those tools and you found this to be inspiring and you know of others who also need these tools, please share this podcast with them. Let them know of the opportunities out there that they too can find their inner peace. Thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you for listening. And have a very mindful day. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.